Hello everyone, I'm Richard Roberts coming to you live from Accra, Ghana in West Africa. I am on the banks of the Ningo River here uh, in one of the, I guess on the suburbs, uh, in the suburbs of Accra. Accra is the capital of the nation of Ghana, formerly called the Gold Coast when it was a colony under the British Empire. Uh, uh, Ghana was one of the first nations in Africa to gain their independence many years ago and uh, now called Ghana. I have been here, as many of you know, I've been here many times over the years. I've conducted great crusades in this nation. I've laid hands on four individual presidents of this nation over the years, and um, uh, Ghana has been like a second home. I am an honorary Ghanaian citizen, made so by a number of bishops years ago. And it's a great uh, privilege and honor to be here and uh, to have an opportunity to minister this week. We're starting tonight. Uh, we arrived last night. I did a little test last night. You may have seen it. I did a little test to make sure that I had good uh, Wi-Fi going here, and we do. I'm staying in the guest home here at Potter's City. Potter's City was founded by my longtime friend, Pastor Nanase, and uh, he and I have been friends for many years, and I thank God for him and his wife, Ivory, and for their children and for the work that God is doing here in Ghana. This is a complete compound. Uh, it uh, has a wonderful church, a worship center, has a bank. It has a number of shops and restaurants and things of that nature. It's a little city within a city. And uh, they have a beautiful guest home here, and that's where we're staying. Uh, Mike, my vice president, is, stay, is with me on this trip. We had a long flight. Uh, we flew uh, over to Europe and changed planes and came down. You, There's no direct flight to Africa. Uh, from uh, from the Midwest, you have to stop uh, in Europe and change, and we did that, and we came on in uh, last night and uh, had a had a good night's sleep. <laughs> had not been to bed for about 24 hours. I'm not a good sleeper on airplanes, uh, so had a good night's rest. And it's uh, we're five hours ahead of Midwest time, where I am Central time, where I live. So it's a little bit after 11 a.m. here. I know it's early there where you are, but I praise God for this opportunity. Now, if you have a prayer request today and you'd like me to pray from you here from Potter's Center, Potter's City here in West Africa, then send it to me right now. Share this video with your family and your friends today and let them know that I am live in Ghana. Uh, this is something that I have looked forward to for a long time. As I said, we're starting tonight and we'll go through Sunday here and there are pastors who have come from all over the world as a matter of fact, I just uh, heard a pastor who's come all the way from Canada just for this meeting and expecting healing prayer. And I was ministering, or I should say, uh, talking on the phone with my longtime friend, uh, Pastor Hank Kuhneman, who has a very powerful prophetic ministry. He prophesied over me, over some of the things that would be happening while I was here in Africa this particular trip. And so I thank God for that. Those of you just uh, joining us, I am live in Accra, Ghana. It's a little bit after 11 a.m. here on Wednesday, and I praise God for an opportunity to be here in Africa. Africa has been like a second home to me. I've been coming to Africa since, uh, let's see, the first time I came, I believe, was in 1973. So many, many times. I probably have made at least 30 or more trips to Africa uh, during all these many years. And I have preached in many, many countries from the north to the south, from the east to the west. And I'm on the west side of Ghana, or excuse me, the west side of Africa now in the nation of Ghana, right on the ocean. And I thank God for this. Uh, welcome to all of you who have just joined me. As I said, if you have a special prayer request, send it to me. I can send my prayers to you right where, from where I am to where you are, because there is no distance in prayer. God is here where I am, and he's there where you are. I was thinking about uh, the ministry tonight and what the Lord wanted me to do. And for the past several days, I have uh, heard the Lord saying the word perseverance. Perseverance. I have that in my spirit. And I think part of that may have been uh, because of something that happened this last weekend. Um, I, I mentioned it on my Saturday night phone call. If you were on the phone call, uh, you already know about it, but I've not talked about it yet on Facebook or anywhere else publicly. But I thought I would share that story tonight. And because I'm going to share what happened to me last week, I thought it would be appropriate for me to share with you today here on Facebook. We had quite an experience this past weekend. Um, Lindsay and I went up to St. Louis on Friday. 
uh, because Lindsay had been invited to speak at uh, a women's conference at Church on the Rock. Church on the Rock in St. Louis is pastored by David Blunt and his wife, Kim. And Lindsay had been there a number of years ago in a women's conference, and we're going back again. And uh, she wanted me to go with her. I was getting ready to go to Africa, and she said, well, why don't you come go with me to St. Louis, and when you come home, you can head to Africa. So I traveled with her. We flew up. And when we got there on Friday, the, the service for her, Lindsay's service was Friday night, this past Friday night. When we got there, we no more than landed, and I turned my, my, my phone back on. You know how you have to turn your phone off when you're on the airplane. I turned my phone on, and I got an email immediately from the airline saying that our flight home on Saturday had been canceled. Well, everyone in uh, America knows what happened uh, with, the, with the air crash that was in Africa uh, over in Ethiopia uh, a week or two ago and how the 737 MAX planes had been grounded. Well, apparently our flight was affected by that, so our, our flight was canceled. And we began looking around trying to find a flight back home because I had to get home immediately because I was getting ready to go to Africa. Uh, and, um, and there were no flights available. Everything was sold out. <laughs> and so here we are. We're in St. Louis. And Lindsay's going to preach Friday night. We planned to fly home on Saturday morning and get prepared because I was leaving uh, to come to Africa on Monday morning. And I had a few things that I had to do at home, including celebrating uh, one of our daughter's birthday on Sunday. Our daughter, Olivia, uh, had a birthday on Sunday. And we wanted to, wanted to be there naturally for that. So now here we are, we, we're, uh, we're going to minister, or at least Lindsay, Lindsay's going to minister. I'm going to be one of the only men among hundreds and hundreds of women. <laughs> Actually, David Blunt and I sat in the front row. And there were about, I think there were three men that I saw in the service. <laughs> David and I were two of them. Uh, we, we started looking for flights and everything was sold out. Uh, uh, because uh, it was spring break, you know, uh, across schools, across the country. And, and other people uh, were booking all the flights and there was no flight. There was no flight home. So we said, well, let's rent a car and drive home. Well, that's a long drive, but uh, we, we decided we, we'd get a car and drive home on Saturday because uh, we wanted to be home in time for our daughter's birthday as well as I had to get prepared for this trip. So it was an inconvenience, uh, but uh, I've driven many places in my life. I enjoy driving. So Lindsay and I, we decided we'd, she'd drive a couple hours, I'd drive a couple hours. And uh, so we're driving along. And uh, things are going just just well, just real real well, when all of a sudden we had a flat tire. <laughs> now it was on Saturday afternoon, and in little small rural Oklahoma towns, which is about where we were, uh, the tire shops we discovered close at noon. <laughs> now I'm in a rental car, and uh, we pulled off the side of the road. Liz, we were drive, taking turns driving. She'd drive a couple hours. I'd drive a couple hours. You know how you do. You switch back and forth. And uh, so uh, I needed some help. Now, I'm not a very good mechanic. <laughs> Lindsay will tell you that I don't have a mechanical bone in my body. But anyway, I'm out there. We're trying, we're trying to figure out how to get this tire off and get the little donut tire on. And, and a guy came out of this convenience shop where we were parked and said, let me help you. And uh, so I was grateful for the help. So we finally got that, they got that tire. Well, I should say he helped get that. He, okay, let's just say it straight. He got the tire off. <laughs> and we got the donut on. And a little tiny donut tire, you know, you not you can't drive very far on it. And meanwhile, we're making phone calls all over that little town, trying to find a place that was open that had a tire. All the tire shops were closed. Well, the Walmart was open. So uh, we once we got that donut tire on, uh, we drove a couple of miles up to Walmart, and uh, I went in the back uh, the service area, the, the auto area, and uh, the man came out, and he, he looked at the situation, and he went through his, his whole uh, uh, store of tires and found that he did not have any tires like that, that particular size. And uh, uh, we couldn't find anything else that was open. And I'm thinking, I, I need to get home, and my daughter's birthday, is, we had plans on Sunday morning, and, and it's already now 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday, and, and I'm still probably three hours from home, um, and, uh, and I'm praying, and, and, and all of a sudden, Lindsay burst into tears, you know, because it's her daughter, her daughter's birthday, she knows I'm going to Africa, she knows she's going to be home for a while by herself, and... I mean, have you ever, ever just had ever just had seemingly everything go wrong? And uh, we couldn't find a tire, and Lindsay burst into tears, and, and a man and his wife walked up and said, "What's wrong?" Uh, and they began to they they recognized Lindsay. 
Well, Lindsay's got tears running down her face, and she says, I'm so sorry, I'm embarrassed, uh, you know, that I'm crying. And the lady said, well, how can we help you? She said, well, we, we can't find a tire. All the tire shops are closed. Well, we immediately got on the phone again, and the, the Walmart uh, guy was helping us. And uh, pretty soon we found there was one tire shop in the town that opened. It was open. And uh, we called over there, and the guy had one tire that was the size of this tire on this rental car. And so we had to find out how to get over there, so we got directions, and the man and his wife said, well, just follow us. We live in this area. We'll, we'll take you. We, we know where that is. So, so they drove us over there, and sure enough, the man had a tire, and we got it on, and we got home. Um, made it home. Took us about another three hours to drive home, but they, this couple even offered to pay for the tire. I wouldn't let them pay for it, but, but they, they offered to pay uh, for, for the tire. It was like an angel. The man helped me change the tire, and this couple were like, like angels. You know, I think we, we entertain angels unawares from time to time in our lives. They just showed up at the right time in our, our time of need. But I, I'd said to Lindsay, and I, I, I failed to mention this a minute ago, I should have, uh, I, I failed to mention that when it looked like it was the worst, when it looked like we were going to wind up having to spend the night in that little town because there was no tire to be found, I said, Lindsay, we're going to persevere. And I give you my word, I'll get you home. And that was a word of faith that came out of my mouth. I've been having words of faith like that all my life. I remember once when I was a little boy, uh, when I, I guess I was six or seven years old and my, little, my sister was four or five. And at that time, as little children, we slept in the same room, had two beds in the same room. And uh, I remember one night it was storming and my, my sister was crying, scared by the storm. And... I leaned over uh, toward her bed, and I said something that I didn't even realize what I was saying, but it came out as a word of faith. I said, go to sleep. Jesus is awake all night. I didn't realize it at that young, tender age of six or seven, however old I was, that I was giving a word of faith. And she quieted down and dried off her tears, and she went to sleep because Jesus is awake all night. Well, I've got news. He's still awake all night. And we can make a Holy Ghost decision to persevere. Sometimes things happen in life. The Apostle Paul had it happen to him. I mean, he wound up in a storm, shipwrecked on the island of Malta for months and couldn't make it to Rome. But he had a word from God. God had said to him, you're going to light the lamp of the gospel even in the household of Caesar. You're going to minister to Caesar and his family. And you're not going to die in a ship on the Mediterranean. <laughs> I remember years ago, Lindsay and our children, our children were little, and we were in a hotel in California getting ready to preach. And it was 5 o'clock in the morning, and all of a sudden, a major earthquake hit. And the hotel that we were in uh, began to shake and rattle and roll. <laughs> and uh, we, it awakened us, and we were jolted out of bed, and naturally, we, we ran for our children, and, and uh, you know, you... you you, you know at a time like that you're not supposed to use the elevator. We were up on like the 17th floor of this, of this big hotel. And we're scheduled to preach a few hours later, and we're going to get up and get dressed, and now all of a sudden we're jumping out of bed with, a, with an earthquake. And I'm running around trying to catch my children, you know, and everybody's scared. And, and you know how you, 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 you get an earthquake, and the, the floor is shaking, and the pictures are falling off the wall, and... And uh, the first thought you have is this is the end, you know? you know. You know how your mind works. And the devil began to say, you're going to die. You're going to die. You're going to die. Uh, you're never going to go to all these places, you know. And the Lord spoke to me and gave me a word of faith. He said, uh, I've called you to 40 nations, and you've only been to 11. <laughs> and you're not going to die in an earthquake. Those are defining moments in our lives where your faith just perseveres. Well, this past Saturday, our faith persevered that we weren't going to allow, allow anything to stop us from getting home. It didn't look like for a while that we were going to get home by Saturday night for a special celebration with our daughter. It didn't look like it. And a lot of times things don't look like they're going to work out. But God has a way of working those things out in our lives. I remember the story in the Bible of the woman who had a demon-possessed daughter. I think it's in Matthew chapter 15. And she came to Jesus beseeching him. Now that word beseeching means she, she really laid it on him <laughs> concerning her daughter. 
the disciples had already told her, Jesus, send her away. You know, she cries too much. And Jesus wouldn't answer her. And then finally, uh, he, said, he said to her, it's not right to take the children's bread and cast it before dogs. Now, it seemed like it was a, it was a slur against her. She was a, a Syrophoenician woman. She was a Lebanese woman from uh, probably in the area where Beirut, Lebanon is today. She was not a Jew. She was not a part of the covenant. And Jesus said, it's not right to take the children's bread and cast it before dogs. Well, if you study the Bible, you'll find that children's bread was a reference to healing. And healing belonged to God's covenant people, the Jews. And Jesus was really saying, it's not right to take healing, which is the children's bread, and cast it for someone who lives like a wild animal. Now, in those days, the Syrophoenician people were nomadic people. They worshiped false gods. They were not part of the covenant. They did not have Bible rights. They did not have covenant rights. And Jesus was saying, it's not right to take healing and give it to someone like you, someone who lives like a wild animal, like a dog. Pretty heavy slam, it seems. But wait to hear the rest of the story. She didn't get mad. She didn't do what many people would do today. She didn't curse him out. She didn't yell and say, well, I knew I couldn't count on you. No, she didn't do that. The Bible says that she worshiped him. She persevered. She wouldn't let go. And that's a picture of my wife. My wife, my wife uh, uh, is like that. She's very persistent. And when Lindsay gets something in her faith teeth, you could just write it down. It's going to happen. <laughs> well, Lindsay's a lot like that Syrophoenician woman. That woman just wouldn't let go. She wouldn't stop. And she worshiped Jesus. And she said, you know, Jesus, you're right. I do live like a wild animal. It's like I'm a dog. But even the little dogs in Israel get to eat the scraps from the master's table. Now, even though she wasn't a Jew, she knew the Jewish custom. In those days, the Jewish custom was every family had a, what they called a little lap dog. And the master of the house, the father, the husband, would allow that little puppy, that little dog, to sit on his lap during mealtime. And he would feed the scraps from the table to the little dog. And she knew that custom. And she said, all that you say about me is true, Jesus. However, even the little dogs in Israel get to eat the scraps from the master's table. What she was saying was, Jesus, you don't have to do anything spectacular. Just give me a crumb. And let me use my faith. It reminds me of when I was a boy, there was a woman who brought her little boy into the prayer line in one of my dad's crusades. And he was on metal crutches with braces and one of his hips was completely flat. And Brother Deweese, who was my dad's longtime associate evangelist, handed the prayer card to my father. That was the custom that uh, he would hand my dad a prayer card so my dad could see what the affliction was and know before he prayed. And the little card said that the boy had been born without a hip socket. Not that it had deteriorated. He didn't have one. It, was, it wasn't there. And his hip was all flat and sunken in. And my dad looked at that woman and said, Ma'am, and there must have been 10,000 people in the crowd. She, he said to her, Ma'am, I'm so sorry. I just don't have faith. For a creative miracle. And the woman said, Oral Roberts, I don't ask you to have any faith at all. You just pray, and I will do the believing. <laughs> well, <laughs> my dad was shocked, but he went ahead and prayed for the little boy, and he left in what looked like the same condition as when he came in. But the next night, when he got to the tent, Brother Deweese had the woman and the little boy up on the platform. And there were no braces, there were no crutches, and the little boy was running and jumping. And my dad walked up to the platform and called the little boy over and put his hand where he had put his hand the night before. The night before it was all sunken in because there was no, no hip socket. And in the night, miraculously, supernaturally, God had created a hip socket. And the little boy was running and jumping like any normal boy. That woman had said, Jesus, you don't have to do anything spectacular. You just give me a crumb. Let me believe. And Jesus 
said something to her that he only said to one other person. He said, woman, great is your faith. Now, the only other time he said that was to a Roman centurion who had come to him in behalf of his military aide, who the Bible says was grievously tormented with paralysis. Only twice did Jesus use the words great faith. Once to a Roman army captain and once to this Syrophoenician woman. And Jesus said to her, woman, great is your faith. So be it done unto you even as you have believed. And Jesus healed her demon-possessed daughter and cast that spirit out. That woman had perseverance. Just like Lindsay and I persevered this last weekend when it looked like there was no way we were going to get home. <laughs> I may minister on that tonight here. We'll see how the Lord leads. It'll be a wonderful crowd tonight of people, and I'm expecting lots and lots of miracles. As I said, there are several prophetic words that came forth this weekend concerning me here in Ghana. But I've got news. The same God who's going to perform miracles here, the same God who helped me and Lindsay to persevere this past weekend after it looked like we weren't even going to be able to get home, the same God who helped that woman in the Bible persevere when she said, I'm going to keep at it, Jesus, until I get my miracle. The same God is available to you right now. He hasn't changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so even though there are thousands of miles between you and me right now, if you're in the United States or Canada or, or maybe you're in Africa today or maybe you're in Asia or maybe you're watching in Europe, wherever you are, there's no distance in prayer. The same God is right here. And it's time for you and me to persevere and stay with it in the name of Jesus. Father, right now, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the Holy Spirit that I pray this prayer. And my friend, I come against anything and everything that's unlike God that has tried to attach itself to you. I curse it. I bind it in the name of Jesus. I pray for God's healing touch upon your life. And I send the word to you according to Psalms 107 verse 20 which says he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. I send the word to you now. And I believe God for you, for a miracle. Praise God. Praise God. I am expecting a miracle today for you. Hang in there. You say, well, Richard, I'm, I'm holding on to the end of the rope. Well, tie a knot on it and hold on. I'm at the end of my rope. Tie a knot and hold on. Praise God. The darkest hour is just before the dawn, but the dawn is about to break. And I praise God. I pray over you today expecting the miraculous in your life. And I thank you for praying over me. In just a few hours from now, we'll be in our first service here in Ghana. And I'm, oh, I'm so looking forward to tonight and all through this week. I'll be ministering here throughout this week. Then I'll be coming back to the United States next week and praising God for his miracle touch in the people's lives. And I'm praying over you. And you can send me your prayer request here on Facebook. I'll be laying my hands on all these prayer requests as I always do. Or you can also contact me online, oralroberts.com slash prayer oralroberts.com slash prayer. You might want to check out our entire website, oralroberts.com, and see all that's available to you. You can go on over to our bookstore, oralroberts.com slash bookstore, or for your prayer request, oralroberts.com slash prayer. Get your prayer request to me. Lots and lots of things uh, getting ready to happen. In just a, a few weeks from now, I'm going to be premiering a brand new book on our television program. I won't say any more about it. It's at the printer now getting ready. I'll be writing about it in my April letter, as well as talking about it on television, something that, that's brand new. And it'll be available the first week in April. I'll tell you more about it. I'm very, very excited about it. Lots of things are going on. Uh, Lindsay's back at home. I talked to her uh, late last night after I arrived and talked to all of our children and prayed over all of them. And I'll be communicating with them uh, by, uh, you know, each day as I'm here. Thank you for your prayers. Every prayer that you pray over me is greatly appreciated. Oh, thanks. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous person availeth much. I thank God for your prayers, and I thank God for all of your support of this ministry. Every time you sow a seed, you help me in all the things we're doing for God. Praise God. 
I'll see you next time. Uh, by the way, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow uh, in the United, United States time, uh, 1230 Eastern, 1130 a.m. Central time, Lindsay will be live on Facebook with her Lindsay's Thursday Pray Day. She's going to have to be her own cameraman tomorrow because I'm not there to help her. <laughs> but I know she'll do great, and I'll be watching her. Uh, let's see, 1130. Uh, yes, I'll be watching her. It'll be early my time, but I'll be watching her tomorrow. So be sure and don't miss her uh, Facebook tomorrow. Praise God. I'll see you next time, and I might give you a, a couple of extra reports this week as things happen here in Ghana, so uh, be looking for it. Keep all the, your notifications on so you can be notified if I decide to do something again live. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.